Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you're joining us from. And welcome back here to the Launchpad and our live launch coverage of Rocket Lab's first launch of 2022 and their first ever launch from their brand new Pad A down at the Bahia Peninsula in New Zealand. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name's Zach. I'm the host here at TLP and here at the Launchpad. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. And you're joining us for our live launch coverage of Electron's mission, The Owl's Night Continues. This is another launch that Rocket Lab is doing as part of their partnership with the Synspective Constellation. Uh, and we're going to go through all the details of today's mission. But as always, we love to hear from you guys. Where are you tuning in from? You know we got people all around the world, so take a moment and drop that in the chat. Also, we want to address it right off the top. We know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now, and we are watching it. And if you're in our Discord, or if you're not, we invite you to join our Discord. It's totally free to do so. We do have a section in there where we've been following along with the news and just talking as a community and getting through it uh, together. Obviously, our thoughts and our prayers are with everyone over in the Ukraine, and we just, yeah, pray for peace for that and hope that um, the world can figure out what's going on with it. Uh, and figure it out quickly but we are monitoring that but uh, we're going to try to focus on rocket lab today that's why we're here um, so if you do guys have questions about everything that's happening in the world drop those over in the discord but we're going to try to stay focused on today's mission and stay with that for the future launches because we're probably going to be dealing with this for a while but we're glad that you guys are here take a moment engage that like button it really does help us out uh, today's mission we're expecting rocket lab to go live uh, in about 10 minutes or so, we do have them spooled up and ready to go, so we will patch them in the uh, the moment that they are ready to uh, begin their stream here. Um, but as always, we love answering your guys' questions about the mission, so if you have any, you can drop those in the chat, and we'll continue to answer those as we count down towards the expected liftoff time of today's mission, which is 2037 UTC, uh, or about 27 minutes from now. Rocket Lab generally starts coverage about 20 minutes before and that's when we'll hear an update on the rocket the fueling and the, how everything is proceeding today's mission is as i said another one for the synspective inc company that rocket lab uh, has partnered with they're launching from launch complex 1b from the mejia peninsula in new zealand payload is uh, under 100 kilograms about 220 pounds and is going up into a sun synchronous orbit of 561 kilometers in um for today uh they will not be attempting to recover today's stage though they are still working on that with electron and we hope this year we will see that first recovery attempt uh in the next couple of launches so the first stage will crash into the pacific ocean uh, weather, as we've been hearing, has been looking good, and as we said, this is the first launch of 2022 and from the first launch from Pad 1B uh, in New Zealand, and that's the 24th Electron launch in total, and believe it or not, we are already at the 20th orbital launch of 2022, and it's not, and it's the end of February today, actually, so uh, it is uh, definitely getting uh, a high number there. If you multiply that out, we're going to have a lot of launches this year, which is super exciting. We've pre-scheduled a bunch on our channel, so you can head on over to the channel and hit set reminder. And if launches move, we don't delete those. We adjust the time, so you'll get reminded when things have happened. Uh, it looks like uh, Rocket Lab has started up their stream, so we're going to patch them in here. Um, they haven't started actually showing anything yet, so... Once they do that, then we'll uh, we'll listen into their mission control uh, and hear what uh, they're saying about the rocket and how they're getting ready for today's launch. But we got people all over the world tuning in. It's great to have you all here. Uh, let's see. We got Texas. We've got Vermont. We've got Cornwall. Uh, we got lots of people here. Eastern Canada. Great to see you. Um, lots of Eastern Canada's. More Cornwall. <laughs> San Antonio. Mississippi. New Jersey, London, Belgium, Brighton, uh, let's see, London, Ontario. Great to have you all here and glad that uh, you're joining us for today's first launch of Electron of 2022. It's been a little bit since we've seen one of these. Uh, and we know Rocket Lab had said they had a really cram-packed end of last year. It wasn't too, too busy, so hopefully we'll see a very busy beginning of this year, especially now the fact that they have their two pads online uh, and they can actually have two Electrons on the pad uh, preparing for missions. It gives them a lot of flexibility. I believe they said they're 
hoping that they could do like 100 missions a year or something 120 uh with those two pads being online which is uh quite incredible for it as always if you guys have questions send it over in the chat and we'll be answering those live as we count down to lift off about 25 minutes from now um and what country will it pass over so it's launching out of new zealand uh and they will show us a map on the uh, the launch path, but let me pull it up here. I believe they have it as well on their website already um, Let me grab that for you uh, Just because it does change slightly with each uh, mission. So we want to make sure Telling you the right trajectory of the rocket. It is launching into an inclination of We oh they haven't even put that up. Let's take a look here They normally put up a map and I must have been thinking of it from a previous mission as they do not, uh, they have not put it out yet. So we'll hear when they start. They'll let us know. Uh, normally it launches to the east or the southeast. That's the direction it goes over the ocean. Uh, it is quite a small rocket compared to Falcon 9s and stuff. So it is a little bit harder to see. Uh, one thing that's, I think, good to call out, actually, is that this is the first mission we are seeing with their new logo. So that logo on your screen there is Rocket Lab's new branding. They brought out uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, so uh, excited to see what other changes they have done in the studio um, getting ready for today's mission. If you guys have questions, you can drop those in the chat. Take us at the launch pad, and we'll work on answering those as we count down. Rocket Lab has tweeted they're live and they are ready to go. They're going to go live 20 minutes before, so we should expect to see them begin their coverage in about two minutes from now. Purpose of this launch, it is launching a satellite, one of three, I believe, that they have uh, in partnership with the SIN... I always say this one wrong. The SIN Spective Inc., um, for it and it's launching into a constellation. It's carrying the STRIX dash and a really unique B satellite uh, for a constellation. The mission will mark the first uh, of it, the second satellite in their partnership. The satellite was supposed to launch on a Soyuz, however, due to the change in the launch schedules, uh, the company actually signed a new contract with Rocket Lab to launch this and two more satellites uh, with it. It's um, Satellite drives its name from Paramounts of Owl's Night in the mission's name. In turn, the highlights is able to monitor Earth's surface at any time, day or night. So it's a, a monitoring satellite uh, that they will put up, and I'm sure they will dive a little bit deeper into that as they uh, count down. Uh, the constellation it's going into currently has 30 satellites in orbit, and Rocket Labs, this is the second of three so far that they've been awarded to continue that maintenance of the uh, constellation. So that's great to see Rocket Lab uh, getting considered there uh, and getting more of these missions. If you're just joining us, we're counting down until liftoff of today's Electron 24 mission and the first mission from Launchpad 1B down in New Zealand. Uh, we are about 21 minutes away from liftoff and just waiting for Rocket Lab to give us an update on the vehicle uh, and begin that final count sequence. Uh, I saw someone asking about the fuel variant. Uh, the first stage has nine Rutherford engines uh, that produce uh, 5,600 pounds of thrust for 311 seconds. And the second stage has one vacuum optimized Rutherford engine, creates 5,800 pounds of thrust for 343 seconds. This is the same engines we've seen them use. Uh, quite a while so we're used to it they run on rocket grade kerosene uh, rp1 and liquid oxygen or lox um, these are the uh, that's what they have um, some of the components of the rutherford engines are actually 3d printed um, the main propellant valves the injectors and the engine chamber um, so it's one of the few rockets right now that is being 3d printed impartial and we're seeing more and more companies looking at doing that as well how many launches have Rocket Lab completed, Ask Andy? This is their 24th, so they've had 23 launches. Um, they have had a couple failures uh, over the years, uh, as most startups do. Um, we did have, I believe, one last year, uh, early in the year, so we hope we start this year off a little bit better. Um, but I believe they're only at two failures, maybe three. Um, so they're, they're doing pretty well. They're over 20 successful, for sure. 
Jay's asking, you launched a discount in the store? Absolutely, Jay. If you guys head over to our shop, we'll drop the link in the chat there for you guys. Use promo code launch day, all one word, and you can get up to 10%. You can get 10% off of everything in your order. Uh, we do ship around the world, so uh, no worries about that if you're not in North America. We do have shipping for Australia and New Zealand. We have shipping for Europe and Asia, um, so definitely you can check that out. Three failures. Perfect. Thank you. Starmer, how long would the launch last? The launches are actually fairly quick in themselves. Uh, looks like Rocket Lab is starting up here, so we'll listen in to get started. Some views there of the two rockets out on the pad. First time we're seeing this. Uh, it's an absolutely beautiful launch complex. Uh, LC1 uh, with pad A and B, and we're excited to see the first ever electron liftoff from pad 1B there today. Uh, the rocket's going to have white lines on it today as they are not reusing it. So in this video, you've seen some that have red lines. Red at Rocket Lab means reusability. Um, so that is what uh, we're not going to see today. But uh, excited to hear an update on today's rocket uh, and how they are probably some updates on what they're expecting for the rest of this year. They've got some big missions coming up uh, with their satellites, with going to the moon for NASA. Uh, Rocket Lab becoming a big player in the game but let us listen in to Rocket Lab Mission Control as we count down T minus 18 minutes. From our private spaceport, Rocket Lab Launch Complex One in Mahia, New Zealand. My name is Muriel Baker. It's great to have you join us for our 24th Electron Launch, a mission for Earth Imaging Company Synspective that we have named the Owls Night Continues. We have a tight opportunity to fly this mission today as we work within an instantaneous launch window. That means we will launch Electron today at exactly 0937 local time or 2037 UTC. But if we need to stand down for any reason today, we do have backup opportunities available every day for the next 13 days. But back to the pad, and if you're wondering why the view looks a little different for today's launch, that's because Electron is lifting off from our new second launch pad, Pad B, at Launch Complex 1 for the very first time. We operate two pads at LC1 now, and between these and our pad at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport in Virginia, our customers have three launch pads to choose from across two continents. Having two pads in the one complex means we can carry out more than one launch campaign at the same time. And with three satellite clean rooms, a rocket hangar big enough for multiple electrons at once, and other facilities to support multiple missions, we can have one customer getting ready for a mission while another is on the pad ready to fly. So with two pads, there is no stand down period needed after a launch, which makes it possible to launch back to back if we need to. There are 120 launch opportunities possible every year from Launch Complex One. Sorry, guys, and if you thought do I had the that math, on the right that means screen. missions just hours apart can take place, not weeks or months or years. Also, if a customer needs a little more time on the ground, as is pretty common, rather than holding up the whole manifest, we can simply bump the next one up the launch queue with two pads available. Another bonus of operating our own spaceport is that we avoid paying hefty costs to launch from a range owned and operated by another organization. Let's check out what more our founder and CEO, Peter Beck, has to say about our shiny new launch pad. Hello and welcome to Launch Complex One in the beautiful Mahia Peninsula in New Zealand, the only private orbital launch site in the entire world. So just behind me here is our newest edition, Pad B. So Rocket Lab sometimes uses copyrighted music, so hopefully that wasn't enough, but we'll uh, cut off there. Sorry, I thought I had that on the right screen. Uh, I guess the, the editor moved it back, but uh, uh, absolutely beautiful looking weather there today as we come down T minus 15 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Um, this video they put out over on their Twitter, so uh, if you guys want to check it out, definitely do. They did some, uh, some fun dancing with their two uh, electrons on their two tilting pads uh, as they uh, brought those two pads online for the first time if you guys are down in the New Zealand area and are uh, going to be seeing the launch if you guys have any photos or videos you can make sure to send those over to us over on Twitter tag us at TLPN underscore official or send them in on discord for a chance to possibly be featured on here or get retweeted on Twitter there are, is a couple launch locations that uh, Rocket Lab has on their website where you can go actually view the site uh, from the closest spot but because it is on a peninsula uh, it is pretty limited on what you are able to uh, actually be able 
to see. One thing I did want to call out, someone made a mention of uh, shipping with Russia, obviously not happening. Um, so just so, yeah, that's there right now. Uh, but if you're just joining us, welcome here to the Launchpad. You're joining us for our live launch coverage of Electron 24. The Owl's Night continues as we count down the last 14 and a half minutes to lift off. Rocket Lab showing off their two new pads there. We'll listen back in once this video is completed. The view looks a little bit different this time than we're used to because of the, the new pad, a little bit closer into the hills. Um, but still a great view off of that peninsula with the ocean behind. It would make a great skate park between the two launches. Uh, I'm sure it'd be a very... I, I just want to stand there. Uh, I'm sure there's some incredible sunrises and sunsets that you can see there. So maybe one day we'll be back down there. If you guys have questions, make sure to send those in the chat. Tag us at the launch pad, and we'll be answering those as we count down uh, through the next uh, 14 minutes until liftoff. Justin, do you think SpaceX will be able to launch Starship from Boca Chica? Uh, eventually. Um, I'm hopeful that they will be able to this year, but uh, if not, Kennedy will be being brought online in the near future. I hope this one deploys the second stage correctly. I think prior launch had a problem, uh, Seravin. The last one didn't. It was, I believe, two or three ago did. But, um, it's been a couple, at least, since the last one. Um, though we see a lot of electrons, we don't see that many a year. So uh, hopefully we'll see them pick up that one there. Jay, thank you so much for that order. I uh, appreciate you supporting us in that way. Just order that. Please consider tall size. It is something we're trying to look into with our manufacturer. Also, we'll be launching a whole ladies and kids collection here uh, in the near future as well. So make sure you stay tuned uh, for that and bringing out new things all the time as well. But let's listen back in to Rocket Lab Mission Control. So we count down 12 minutes, 40 seconds and counting. Go, no go pole scheduled for T minus 12 minutes. Minutes. This mission's launch director, Joseph Carpico, will run our operators through their systems checks during one of the gates we need to pass through to get to launch. Let's listen in to Mission Control to hear what they have to say. Waiting in to hear this go to go poll in about 15 seconds from now. Right now you can see those live views on the left kind of file folder. On the right side, a live view into Rocket Lab Mission Control. There sleek room and facility there we should expect that poll to begin now i hear anything just yet so they can conduct they do have some time to conduct it but they normally conduct it uh, earlier on that way they do still have their time for uh, the other gates that they do have to proceed through gates are uh, points in the count that they have to have uh, goes through to make sure that they can continue through their count towards the liftoff time thanks astronomer appreciate it one day you will Thanks, Sofa King. Appreciate it. Why are they all wearing black? Black is one of their colors. So Rocket Lab colors are black, red, uh, and gray. So they have a very Unfortunately, we didn't get the audio through there from Mission Control, but oh. we can confirm we are going to proceed with the mission and move towards T-0 and liftoff. We are still on track for our instantaneous launch opportunity at 0937 local time or 2037 UTC. So, so unfortunately didn't get to hear it there, but they are still a go uh, to continue their count. Uh, fueling is complete of the first and second stages. Uh, and that's why we're seeing a little bit of venting there uh, as they've topped up and they're just preparing the launch complex itself.
Do we know the total gross weight of the machine? I was imagining a larger unit. Electron is a, a rather small rocket, especially when you see it uh, next to people. Uh, it is something that can be moved. Electron's only 18.5 meters tall, or 60.7 feet. Uh, and it's only 1.2 meters in diameter, 3.9 Now that we know feet. where today's mission is launching from, let's take a closer look at what is on board Electron today. The Owls Night Continues is a dedicated launch for Synspective, a Japanese company building a synthetic aperture radar, or SAR, constellation. If the name Synspective sounds familiar, that's because Rocket Lab delivered the first satellite in their constellation, the Strix Alpha satellite, as part of the Owls Night Begins mission in December 2020. So you can see where today's mission name comes from. Synspective satellites are designed to provide images that show millimeter level changes to the Earth's surface from space, through clouds and at any time of the day or night. Because it's so accurate and available in all weather, SAR data has a wide range of uses, including urban development planning, construction and infrastructure monitoring, and disaster response. Here's a video from Synspective with an example on how SAR imagery can help in a disaster response to flooding. And there's probably going to be music, so we'll mute it, but uh, we'll at least leave it on screen so you can get the visual of how they will work. Uh, it's a large constellation they're planning of 30 um, that uh, Rocket Lab has have been fortunate enough to begin. Um, it's really neat that they can see in the day and night. Vector sounds familiar from the TV show. Yeah. Hey, Matthew, how's it going? When was that? Matthew, if you can uh, connect with us on Twitter or Discord, that'd be awesome. I didn't hear anything about that. That would have been amazing to have been at. If you can connect with us, that would be great. We'd love to be at those in the near future in person. The countdown's in the bottom right corner there. Okay, that's awesome, Matthew. I Yeah, I've tried to get into those groups, but I haven't heard anything. That would be good to know. Thanks so much. Are you in Edmonton also? I'm from Edmonton, Canada, so it's cool to see other people are in here. Let us know in the chat where you guys are tuning in from. Uh, love to welcome you in. We've got people all over the world. It is a Japanese uh, satellite there, run car, uh, but uh, will be used uh, in a large range of areas. But they'll be able to tell a lot of detail, which is quite incredible. Uh, for flood damages and assessments. T minus seven minutes and counting. We're going to listen back into Mission Control. We are go for flight. One of three launches that make up a multi launch contract with Synspective. So you'll be seeing more owls flying later this year and next. As we come down, T-minus 6 minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. Uh, the final pre-flight poll has been completed and has a unanimous go to continue with the count. That Everything's proceeded well. The rocket is fully fueled, and the range and mission controls have confirmed that the rocket itself is ready for flight. Um, as they prepare to lift off the second of the three contracts they have currently with Synspective con for the Synspective as you can see on your screen, we are opening the top clamp on the strong brack, getting ready to retract it for today's mission. This is the tall structure on the launch pad you see. It will slowly move away from the rocket to prepare it for launch. The strong back keeps Electron firmly in place, but as we prepare for liftoff, we need it out of the way. So we open its top clamp and retract the strong back about 20 degrees, clearing the way for launch. We are now at T minus 5 minutes 40 or so seconds and Electron is looking ready from the pad at, at pad B at Launch Complex 1. The eagle-eyed among you will have noticed the red stripe on Electron's second stage. If you've been following our missions for a while, you'll know that normally red is for recovery. However, we are not attempting to recover the first stage from today's mission, but we are continuing to test systems associated with recovery including enhanced batteries to boost performance of the second stage to offset any mass gains we carry in the first stage's recovery systems. 
After three successful booster recoveries from the ocean, our recovery program is progressing well, and we are very excited to attempt our first helicopter capture in the coming months. Here's some exciting footage from our latest test. So, so awesome footage here, but uh, yeah, we kind of talked about that right before they started, the Reds recovery, white's not, and then we saw a red rocket. So we weren't sure if they were going to do a surprise uh, recovery mission, but uh, they are uh, not, uh, but it sounds good that they're going to do some extra testing. Uh, you can see how they first began testing Electron using helicopters to actually deploy it uh, and then do the tracking and now have actually done recoveries out of the ocean as well of actual rockets that have launched payloads. Uh, we've yet to see one of them actually live, but hopefully we will see that in the near future. T-minus 4 minutes, 15 seconds, and counting. Jonas, when will they try to catch the booster? We had heard Electron 25, which is actually the next mission, uh, I believe is what Peter had said originally. Uh, we might have seen a slight delay as they did shuffle a couple missions. Uh, there was supposed to be one uh, kind of a month or so ago. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. But uh, in the next two to three months, I think we will see that first attempt. The fourth Electron launch, and we have delivered more than 100 satellites to orbit since 2018 none of which would have been possible without our dedicated teams across the United States, Canada and New Zealand. As we increase Electron's launch cadence and continue development on our larger rocket Neutron and expand our space systems and satellite manufacturing capabilities, our team is growing. So if you'd like to be part of it, check out the open positions on the career section of our website at rocketlabusa.com. But it's time now for the final milestones before liftoff. The team are tracking no issues with the launch vehicle, so Inspector's payload remains healthy, and the weather is looking clear for an on-time launch. Soon, at T-minus two minutes, the switch occurs from our team manually controlling the clock to having the countdown take place during an auto-sequence run by the rocket itself. At T-minus one minute and 30 seconds, we should hear the call that locks loading is finished and Electron's tanks are full. And shortly after that, at T-minus one minute, we can expect confirmation that the launch vehicle's first and second stages are pressurized for launch. Then it's on to the countdown run by the launch director from T-minus 10 seconds and liftoff of the mission for Inspective. And as we get down to T-minus 2 minutes, 30 seconds, as always in the chat, let us see a go, no go. If you are a member and helping support what we do, $1.99 a month, you get access to those uh, custom emojis. If not, just type it in, and we're going to keep listening into Rocket Lab Mission Control as we count down T-minus 2 minutes, 15 seconds and counting. Currently go for flight and waiting for that terminal count and auto sequence start. Avian Olympus batteries have switched to internal power. Vehicle is on internal power. EFTS is green and enabled for flight. Clock slide is complete, system in recirculation. Gazering is disabled. High flow engine purge enabled. Deluge is activated. Stage 1 and Stage 2 are pressed. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 10, 10 9, 
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. <laughs> already going 300 kilometers an hour and kilometer in altitude. Electron on its way. Stage one propulsion is nominal. The ice we saw on there, that's normal. It's the cryogenic fuels on board. T plus 40 seconds into the mission and our 24th electron is lifted off from pad B at Rocket Lab Launch Complex 1. The beauty of launching in the morning means we had a clear daytime view of Electron powering its way to space for this inspective, but before it gets there, Electron will pass through a critical point in the mission to clear max Q. This is the moment where there is maximum aerodynamic pressure working against the vehicle, hence max Q, causing the most amount of stress the rocket will experience during its climb. Let's listen in for the call. Oh, so we just heard it there. We have cleared that gate. That's what we wanted to hear. Electron's nine Rutherford engines are firing well and the mission remains on its correct trajectory to space. Now we will run through three actions that will happen quickly one after the other. First, all of the Rutherford engines will throttle down before shutting off completely. That is main engine cutoff or MECO. A couple of seconds later we'll have separation of the first and second stages followed quickly by the single Rutherford engine on Electron's second stage lighting up and continuing the mission to Earth orbit. Coming up to two minutes into flight, already passing 4,250 kilometers an hour, uh, 37,000 kilometers in altitude. She said there, next up is Miko in staging, so we're going to listen in for that call. If you haven't yet, make sure you engage that like button. really does help us out as well. Two minutes, five seconds into flight. You can see that beautiful view came right through that Miko. clearing. This mission is going to a sudden synchronous orbit. There's Miko. And stage separation. Stage separation successful. Stage two ignition. And there's that first stage falling back. Not recovering that on this mission today. We, we heard it and saw it for ourselves. Electron has had a successful Miko stage separation and ignition of its second stage engine. We're coming up on fairing deploy shortly as well. We'll see Electron's nose cone separate and fall away to clear the way for this inspective satellite. So let's keep an eye out for that one. Fairing jettison succeeded. And there go those fairings as well. There you go. You saw the Electron fairing falling away as planned. The rocket's second stage is continuing nominally with its inspective payload to orbit. The vehicle is currently at an altitude of 130 kilometers and reaching speeds of more than 8,700 8, kilometers per hour. HVB battery discharge is nominal. Great question from Toledo. Were you able to retrieve all that hardware? Not currently. Uh, they are hoping later this year to recover the first stage. Uh, they've done a couple test attempts, and they want to catch it out of the air under parachute. Uh, the fairings, though, they do not recover uh, at this time, uh, nor the second stage. And that's a great call out. We're going to move our logo there so you guys can see that telemetry. Sorry about that. Good call out there. Thanks for sending that in. Currently traveling 10,300 kilometers an hour, 173 kilometers in altitude, coming up to four and a half minutes into flight. Next up is going to be that battery jettison where they do the battery hot swap mid flight. Your rockets don't go that high, Matthew. Not yet. One day. One day. Yeah, especially on this side of uh, size of rocket, around your 
absolutely crack shoots on fairings of this type of rocket it'd just be too much of a weight loss uh, on what they would actually be able to take to orbit um, spacex does still capture their fairings but they retrieve them after they parachute into the water catching them out of the air with those ships was uh, just wasn't working out of like 35 attempts i think they had three successful so they've gone to just pulling them out of the water because that works pretty much every time passing up five minutes 20 seconds into flight let's listen back in 3d printed engines will know that rutherfords use batteries to power their pumps but much like anything that runs on batteries we need to swap them out when they run down their power and move to a new one to keep things moving the process of switching out this power source mid-flight is what we call battery hot swap. Sometimes you can catch a glimpse of these battery packs falling away. Let's watch and listen. Waiting for that battery hot swap. Sometimes if the camera's clear, we'll see them jettison gone. away. Approaching hot swap. This is one of the few areas they've had issues in the past. And there goes those batteries. Jettison confirmed. And there they go. Thank you, battery packs, for your service. Electron's trajectory continues to look nominal as we hit T plus 6 minutes and 25 seconds into this mission. Couple more minutes until we'll see that kick stage. Yes, their second stage does burn up unless they turn it into a satellite, which is something they've done with their kick stage part. So two of the four batteries fell away. So they sent four up, two are batteries, and there's two more that will remain on board. Holding nominal. And the batteries are holding power. We're seeing that speed continues. That's a great sign that they had a successful battery hot swap. Cameras are a little glitchy, though, today. If you're just joining us for this mission, our 24th Electron launch, we are well on our way to low Earth orbit for Inspector satellite on board Electron today. So we are, at T, we are at T plus 7 minutes and 24 seconds with Electron carrying on nominally. We've made it successfully through our mission milestones to date, and coming up next will be the engine cutoff on stage two. So that's coming up in just a few moments. Couple questions here from Tim. Two things increase volume. Kate okay, did that. Uh, how can I get an early notification if I'm not on email? I don't get off in time. Um, we are about a minute we do try to, now. We do try to tweet it, uh, or you can be on our Discord and we try to ping the Discord. Uh, unfortunately, YouTube doesn't let us pick when the notifications go out, though. For that milestone shortly. Coming up on another milestone here. Thanks for trying to be here, though. Do appreciate it. Yes, electric power, yes. Entered burnout detected. Electron is now coming up to its next mission milestone, Seco or second engine cutoff. Like when we shut down the main engines earlier in the mission, the second stage single Rutherford engine will stop before the stage separates from the kick stage and the mission continues to orbit. So we've had Miko, and we are coming up to Seco. We do love an acronym in the space industry. Seco confirmed. Seco is in transfer orbit. So you saw it on your screen there, the Rutherford engine on Electron Stage 2 has successfully throttled down and Stage 2 and the kick stage have cleanly separated. The kick stage will now enter what we call a coast phase. 
For the next 50 minutes or so, it will do its first lap around Earth in an elliptical pattern. When it reaches the apogee of this orbit, or the moment it is at its highest point on this egg-shaped path, the Curie engine will fire up and put us in a circular orbit. Once there, we'll deploy Synspective's Strix Beta satellite. We won't have a live video feed of payload deployment, unfortunately, but do stay with us because we have a simulated view of that happening that we'll come back to as the mission closes in those final moments. We'll take a bit of a break now as payload deployment is expected to take place at T plus 53 minutes. So I'll see you back here then. And we are going to leave this view up so you can see where the payload is. We're going to be answering your questions in the chat as well so take a moment send those in take us at the launch pad if you haven't yet head on over to our shop use promo code launch day you can get 10 percent off of everything there uh we're gonna take a very quick commentary break because i do have one thing i need to uh, deal with right now and then i will be back to answer your guys's live comments and questions here so stay with us right here on the launch pad
And for those still hanging out with us, thanks for being here for our live launch coverage of Electron 24 Rocket Labs mission. The Owl Night continues as we are tracking Electron continuing on its journey, awaiting for uh, that Curie Bird and then deployment, uh, which we expect to uh, have uh, in about 20 minutes or so from now. So we're going to keep listening here, seeing your questions in the chat. If you guys have questions, send them in the chat. Take us at the launch pad. Sorry, I had to step away there for a moment. Had a uh, quick call from down by Starbase that I had to take. And uh, always working on multiple angles of bringing you guys the best possible live launch and space coverage that we can. And we're glad to have you all here. If it's your first time here, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button as well. It really does help us out. Uh, and we're glad that you could be here catching up on some of the questions that I see that we uh, uh, did miss. <laughs> People saying Starbase, Elon Musk is calling. Wasn't Elon Musk. Uh, exciting, not that exciting, but uh, we'll, we'll, it was good. And you guys will see something soon over on our Twitter. Um, Eric, I'm guessing. Oh. Just see if there's an update. No, they're just showing into mission control here. Um, I'm guessing they did ask Tim to play his music. Yes, yes, they did. Um, Tim actually does allow people to use his music, um, but uh, they are there. Just saying we got the music for the elevator cover. <laughs> hey, a little lo-fi. Everyone loves a little lo-fi music. Um, space elevator going to Mars. That's amazing. Um, what do the purple circles on the map mean? So the circles that were on your screen there, uh, I believe are the ground stations that they had covered that would be, uh, impacting that mission. So great things there. So yeah, radars, ground stations, things like that. Are we listening to Egyptian music? Uh, no, maybe there was a unique song there. Yes, sending more satellites to fix the world. Exactly. Uh, Caching is asking, what's this rocket for? It is launching uh, one satellite that is part of a constellation that's being developed of 30 that can track uh, the changes to the Earth both in day and night. It's built by a Japanese company. This is the second of 30, uh, and the Rocket Lab has so far launched the two, and they have a third coming up later this year, we expect. Uh, stream will end following deployment confirmation. It is, yes, it is going to a sun synchronous orbit today uh, of 500, and I believe it's about 34 kilometers. Let me double check that. Lots of things to memorize, so appreciate your guys' patience as I try to make sure we report everything correctly and factually. The Cyan astronaut helmet looks like the crew. Yeah, it does. Well, I appreciate that, Jessica. Glad that you uh, make sure that you're here. I uh, appreciate you always being in the chat. We do see you often. And I do see your message, Matthew. I will, uh, I'll send you something after the launch, but thank you so much. I look forward to connecting with you and hearing what's going on here.
Is it Zach, Zach or Zach? I mean, I'd respond to all of them, but I spell it the first way, Chris. Z-A-C or Z-A-C. If you guys have questions, you can keep sending those in the chat. Glad to answer those as we count down. We're going to turn up the uh, tunes, uh, and we will be back close to the, when that Curie bird is expected. So stay with us right here on the launch pad.
And as you can see on your screen, we are expecting to be coming up to that Curie burn occurring. We're waiting for Rocket Lab to give us an update uh, on how that will perform. Coming at T minus or T plus, excuse me, 50 minutes since liftoff of the Owl's Night continues, the second of three missions with Rocket Lab uh, as part of this, the Owl's Night uh, kind of program that they're doing uh, as part of a constellation with the Japanese company's constellation, Synspective. If you're just joining us, launch was about 50 minutes ago, so you can rewind and see that there. We're just waiting for confirmation of that Curie burn and waiting for deployment as well. Now we may or may not have live views of the deployment itself, so we'll be waiting for confirmation from the Rocket Lab team on how that is going. Again, if you haven't yet, take a moment, make sure you join our Discord. We'll be hanging out in live comms following this, as well as check out our shop. You can use promo code LAUNCHDAY, get 10% off of everything in your order, worldwide shipping included. And available, we do have manufacturing available around the world, so you should be able to get your products nice and quick. That Kiri Burn has passed, and we're coming up on that point of deployment. Not hearing any comms yet from Rocket Lab. If you guys have questions, make sure you send those in the chat. We'll answer the last few as we wrap up once we get confirmation here. Upcoming launches that you can look forward to. We got oh, quite a few coming up. We've got Atlas V tomorrow with the brand new GOES T satellite replacing GOES 17. Um, that's tomorrow. We've got Starlink 4-9 on March 3rd. Uh, apparently, we're still going to have a OneWeb launch on March 4th. We're waiting to hear confirmation of that. Starlink 4-10 on March 8th. 4-12 Starlink on March 15th and more. Let's listen into an update from Rocket Lab Mission Control. Welcome back to the webcast of Rocket Lab's 24th Electron mission, The Owl's Night Continues. If you are just joining us, today's launch included a successful on-time liftoff at 0937 New Zealand local time, or 2037 UTC. The kick stage has completed its first pass in an elliptical orbit of Earth, and we've had a successful Curie ignition to position the kick stage in a circular orbit, so we can deploy this inspective satellite on board. We are standing by for deployment. So good news, while unfortunately we didn't hear it on, hear it on the audio channels, I can give you confirmation that the Synspective satellite has been successfully deployed by Electron on this, the Owl's Night Continues mission. That completes today's 24th Electron mission and officially brings the count of satellites deployed by Rocket Lab to 110. Congratulations and thank you to our customer Synspective on this latest successful launch. We're already looking forward to our next mission with you later this year. A reminder that we are always on the lookout for new talent to join the wider Rocket Lab family. So if you're interested in joining the team, check out the careers page of our website at rocketlabusa.com. And a huge thank you to you at home for tuning into the live stream of this mission. We're going to end the broadcast here, but remember to follow our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages for information on our next launch. For the first time from Pad B at Launch Complex One, this is Rocket Lab Mission Control signing off. And that is it. Rocket Lab mission complete. Uh, launch. You can already see people there down at the pad. Uh, launch pad 1B. Mission success. Deployment confirmed. Uh, really great to hear. Uh, and excited that Rocket Lab has had another successful launch of the Electron here today. As we said, lots of launches coming up this month, as well as hoping to hear about the FAA for Starbase and Axiom taking their first private mission up to the International Space Station. Lots to happen. 
So we hope you'll join us for it right here on the launch pad here at TLP. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. And this was our live launch coverage of Electron 24. The Owl Night continues. And that's all we have for today. This is Zach from the TLP studio signing off. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.